All right now, today I'm going to talk about the subject that everybody wants to talk about. Sasquatch scat. And I know you haven't been able to control yourself waiting for this video. You know, I talk to my little granddaughter, she's seven, and I tell her I'm going to go out in the woods and hike around and see if I can find Sasquatch. And she asked me, well, have you found him? I said, no, he's really hard to find. And she said, well, Grandpa, why don't you look for his poop? Everything poops. Smart kid. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Every creature defecates. And so, the question I get from skeptics about Sasquatch all the time is, okay, if he's real, why can't we find his scat? And the answer to that is, we have found their scat. A lot of people feel that Sasquatch deliberately hide their scat. Now, why would they do that? Well, it's thought because they're creatures that hunt, and they probably use scat as a way to find their game, that that's what causes them to do that. I can't really answer that. But I have actually seen a couple of interviews where people talk about watching Sasquatches defecate and they're basically in water. Uh, both of the times actually they're in a lake or pond defecating in the pond. And the people saw them bend over on four, four legs doing it and they thought it was a bear or some other creature until the Sasquatch stood up. So what, what evidence or what sort of uh, scat has actually been found? Uh, at this point, science hasn't definitely identified any of it. And I think the problem with that is not, in not every situation will a Sasquatch be able to defecate in water. It won't always be near that. And maybe not every Sasquatch is as concerned about that. But, but there has been evidence of scat being found. The problem is, is there's been no DNA evidence taken off of scat that actually shows the scat belongs to a Sasquatch. So what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about some scat evidence that I have seen personally, I've seen pictures of, and then you make your own decision. Okay, so first of all, why don't we spot more scat? Well, number one, uh, Sasquatches apparently hide it. And number two, I think that when it is found, it's in general thought to be bear scat or something like that. Uh, people don't recognize it as Sasquatch scat. And when scat is found, I think in general, it's thought to be either a bear or a dog. Now, a little bit about that. When I was a 12-year-old boy, I went to YMCA camp, and my counselor was a biology grad student. And he was studying animals in, in nature there, and part of what he was doing was collecting the scat of every animal he could find. He had bobcat scat, mountain lion scat, fox, coyote, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He dried it out in a little oven, and then he would spray a lacquer or something on it, I don't know what it was, and then glue it to a board. So he had a display that he could show. And that was part of his graduate school studies in biology. And I remember talking to him, and being a 12-year-old kid, you know, and hadn't discovered girls yet, uh, I was fascinated by this, as only a 12-year-old boy could be, and uh, I remember him talking about how he could differentiate whether it was a fox or a coyote by the diameter of the pellets. And I remember he would talk about other sorts of things, like uh, when dogs are in the, uh, in the woods, a dog will go out in the wood and dig up uh, scat and eat it. Well, invariably, every time they do that, they're eating either mountain lion or bobcat scat, because those scats are basically 100% protein. They don't tend to do that with bears or other animals that have a more varied sort of diet. So uh, also you can tell a good way for uh, scientists to determine the kind of rodents or small animals that are in the woods are to collect scat and then to tear the scat apart and examine the bones. In fact, species of small rodents have been identified by scat or owl pellets that have been found in the woods, dissected, and then the skeletons pulled out, and they've used that to determine 
what sort of species of, uh, of mice or rat or vole or whatever it is you've got. So biology for a long time has been identifying animals by the shape, the look, and the size of its scat. Now what I've got here in this video is I've got first of all some bear scat, very clearly bear scat. And it looks very similar to all the bear scat I see, or almost all of it. And then almost all the time, 70, 80, 90 percent of the time, bear scat uh, is pelleted much smaller in diameter than what you're going to see the pictures of this Sasquatch scat coming up. Usually dark and usually appears to be filled with plant matter, grasses, leaves, things like that. Very little, if any, sort of protein in that scat. This is, these pictures represent an area where a whole bunch of scat was in one small area and I can't really explain why the bear would be doing that other than either they were running some uh, cubs up a tree nearby or right above this or there was some food in the area that wasn't there right now that they had spent a lot of time with. I can't really say what this was. Or it may have been very close to a den. But uh, it's very unusual to find so much scat in such a small area. Uh, so that's basically the way the bear scat has always looked. Now the next picture we're going to show here is what I suspect to be a Sasquatch uh, scat. And first of all, you can see the immense size of it. And by size, I'm talking about diameter. The scat pellet is virtually the same diameter as a dollar bill. And you can see the dollar bill laying next to it. That now, a dollar bill is about two and a half inches around. If you've ever looked at your own defecation, and I'm a good-sized guy, I'm 6'3", 270 to 80 pounds, uh, if, if that Sasquatch scat was a tube, and mine were tubes, I could fit seven or eight of mine inside that Sasquatch scat there. That scat is much too large to be a human, much too large to be a dog, and much too large to be a black bear. Uh, this scat was found in Northern California on the road that parallels Bluff Creek, in the Bluff Creek drainage, where the Patterson-Gimlin film had been made, you know, over 50 years ago. And this was just one of numerous piles of this scat that I found either on the road or on some nearby trails. And it was really interesting to me because I found a lot of bear scat in the area. I actually even saw some black bears in the area. And this scat was in, comprised, it looks like exclusively, of the uh, residue from hazelnuts, which are basically filberts which were growing in all kinds of trees in the area. Now this was in early October and apparently those nuts were ripe at that point. Whereas the bear scat I found, uh, much smaller in diameter and basically didn't have anywhere near, I didn't see any nuts in that scat. I saw basically it was dark fibrous plant type matter that I saw in the bear scat. So this to me was a good example of this. Now in order for scat to be this size, the only animal in North America that might possibly have scat this large would be a Kodiak bear. There aren't any Kodiak bears in Northern California. Now, right, wrong, or different, no DNA was taken. This is a very interesting example. Scientists could not accept this as proof unless there had been DNA taken from the scat. But here's something that, in my opinion, can't be explained, or the only explanation is a Sasquatch. Now, one quick little note. I listened to a scientist talking about how to collect DNA from scat. And you don't want to take samples from the middle of the scat because that's just going to have bacteria in it. What you want is you want the exterior of the scat and primarily the first scat that is pushed out because there are epidermal cells from the animal that's defecating on the exterior of the scat. And the scat in general has to be fairly fresh or do this, not, not laying in the sun for a while, so they're all killed. And that's basically the way to collect DNA from scat. That's just a little side note for any of you that are maybe sick like me and may want to try that someday. But anyway, this is another example. I've got several examples of different piles here, the same pile a couple of times, a couple of close-ups. And then I have one more picture following up here of uh, another fellow, Sasquatch Omega. And before I get into that, let me just say this. Hey, if you like this stuff, which I might think you're sick in the head if you like it, but if you like this stuff like I do,
please subscribe to these videos and hit the favorites button. That really helps me out. And it'll make it so I can make more of these videos. Enough of that. This other scat came from a fellow named Sasquatch Omega. And he found this scat in an area in northern Utah, uh, near a bunch of tree structures. Now, just a pile sitting there amongst the structures. Can't say anything about it. I wish he'd have put a dollar bill or something down because as it is, it doesn't look like bear scat, but dog scat looks very much like this. And if it's in smaller diameter, it could very well have been a large dog. So, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, and if you did, again, please subscribe.